I am a firm believer that Celestia should have killed all the Conrians 500 years ago. But they didn't, which only had worse implications. Because today, I want to propose that Celestia saved Conria from falling into complete withering by turning them into the people of the Abyss. The curse of immortality inflicted upon the people of Conrio was not only meant to punish them, but also to stop the slow, burning effects of the corruption and allow them a second chance at life. Disclaimer, none of this is indicative of the final product and are all just a theory. But anyway, let's begin. We need to go back 500 years ago and start with some context. The war in Conrio was not brought forth by the gods. It was not their jurisdiction to wage war against the pride of humanity, and was even, at some point, envoys that befriended the citizens of Conria as evidenced by Andrew referring to Enkanamia as an envoyless land. The gods, while they didn't rule Conria directly, were still relatively close with them at one time, as heavenly envoys. Therefore, the destruction of Conria was, for all intents and purposes, artificial and man-made. In the Pale Flame set, Piero's artifacts suggest that it was the ruler of Conria's fault that divine retribution fell upon the nation. Consequently, the fault also lies in Alchemist Gold or Rhine Daughter according to the breeze amidst the forest, as well as the fact that Durin and the Riftwolves, her own creations, attacked Mondstadt and Inazuma respectively. It was only after Conria's plight against the Shadow Army that Celestia stepped in by summoning the Archons to fight against the corruption of the Abyss, and it wasn't even confirmed if the Archons themselves went to Conria save for Makoto. And as a final verdict, the whole nation was seemingly purged. But it was purged in a way that didn't entirely erase Conria from the map, but instead immortalized by becoming monsters. Now, they roam in the Abyss or they roam to Vat beyond mortal comprehension, seemingly corrupted by the gods. We first learn about the Curse of Immortality in 1.4 with the Abyss Sibling. In the 1.4 event, Verbatim, the Abyss Sibling says that they despised Dane because he failed to protect the people and watched while the Conrians became monsters of the Abyss. But upon further inspection, at the time, there was no mention that it was the gods that turned the people into the monsters. That man, Danesliff, was the Twilight Sword one of the royal guards of the final dynasty of Conria. 500 years ago, he failed to prevent the destruction of Conria. A curse of immortality was laid upon him to forever wander the wilderness, while he watched the people he was supposed to protect turn into monsters of the abyss. We know that Celestia is not afraid of invoking bloodshed, just like in the Archon War. We also know that their actions have a purpose beyond common understanding. For example, Aether and Lumine were battled against, but they weren't completely killed. The God of Time assisted Makata outside of Ace knowledge and many more, but they are also lawful to the highest degree. Additionally, if they wanted to turn the people of Conry into monsters, this is horribly irresponsible and dangerous. As we know now, the Conryans have access to abyssal magic and runes that extend beyond what they had with Durin, Gold, and the Rifthounds. Additionally, their human forms haven't been completely robbed. We see Conryans who have human forms, descendants who have retained normalcy, and confirmed abyss creatures that can use disguises. So, what's happening? Well, I theorized that the reason Celestia didn't stop at just destroying Gold's creations is because they needed to preserve Conria despite the situation. In a way, it could be a final morbid attempt to prolong the life of a doomed civilization despite the corruption that befell upon them. As a response, the curse of immortality was placed upon them to mitigate the effects of the corruption, but also evoking erosion as a consequence for their actions. To support this claim, I want to go back to 2.6. Dane gives us an insight on what the curse of immortality is. The curse of immortality denies death to those afflicted with it. And yet, it does not truly mean that they will never die. So, you mean, there's a way to undo it? <sighs> no. I mean that the body and soul will continue to be eroded until they are virtually non-existent. Even if death is not the form that this erosion takes. From a surface level, it seems like the Curse of Immortality is essentially the same afflicted to the Archons that we know except for the part that they're internally suffering. It is, in all intents and purposes, the erosion of the mind. 
But what's more fascinating is that cleansing this curse can break a person's mind and that even if it is a curse, the moment that they remove it, they're essentially dead. So no matter how painful the curse may be, it is essential to survival. The pool must be part of the entire city structure, a relic of this ancient civilization. And more importantly, it is the very thing that is weakening the curse. Here, my whole body feels more at peace than it has in a long time. The effect is stronger here than it was before, and I think it's because that water pool has something akin to a cleansing effect. Cleansing? So that means the water in that pool can wash away the curse for good? No, that would be impossible. How are you so sure? I have lived with this curse for 500 years, and I have been fully conscious the entire time. Suffice to say, no one understands the curse like I do. It is a way of branding us at the level of the fate of the world itself. When a god applies a curse, it takes effect at a higher level of reality than the person themselves. Even now, I can feel the curse slowly permeating my entire being, becoming part of me, slowly but surely replacing me. Perhaps it may be possible to suppress the corrosive effect of the curse for a time, but cleansing it entirely? Consider it tantamount to burning away an integral part of your body. It is not a process that one could ever hope to survive. This makes sense. Consider this, the Conrians are 500 years old, especially the abyssal monsters that we know of. If they were to remove the curse of immortality, we see that their spirits are essentially stripped of the corruption and they are able to move on. But the process is horribly grueling. The 500 years finally catches up to their previous human lifespan. Quite like the Intavot, it is pristine forever until it returns to Conria in which it begins to wither. This is symbolic of the fact that in the process of the Abyss trying to cleanse their people and return to their former glory, they will eventually wither away. It is the scene when the contraption slowly activated itself that I believe the monstrification of Conria wasn't completely Celestia's doing. The aura of cleansing is bright gold, a color associated with beauty and divinity in the world of Genshin Impact that you would normally feel at peace in a color that is meant to show purification, and a color that you would normally feel peace in, because this is an aura of cleansing. I also believe that this aura wasn't meant to completely kill, but instead to simply remove the curse despite the pain. Unfortunately, with the nature of the corruption and the curse itself, trying to remove it might mean that creatures with low resilience would eventually fade away, unable to cope with the pain. But I don't think that it's supposed to kill outright. If the Abyss Order's plan was to revive the homeland, inflicting a cleansing that will kill them is counterintuitive. Therefore, I believe that Halfdan's death was cause of the overexertion of his body, but not necessarily the cleansing ritual. Going back, the Curse of Immortality isn't exclusive to Dainsleaf, but to everyone in Conria, warrior and citizen alike. It's possible that Celestia tried to put the entirety of Conria under suspended animation. The destruction we saw in the beginning was Conria itself, while the cubes above most likely had their people, somewhat similar to how Lumine and Aether were swallowed and put into suspended animation. It's also possible that while the Curse of Immortality was a punishment to forever remind them of the past, the curse was a way to preserve Conria's citizens despite the withering and corruption that befell on them. In the previous cases of mitigating against corruption and erosion, we know that some cope through sleeping or suspending themselves for hundreds of years, or by releasing their power into a smaller form, or even using divine and external forms of energy to keep themselves alive. Some just don't cope at all. Subjecting the entire nation to erosion as a punishment is cruel, but at the same time, it might have been the only way to save the people. And in all honesty, it would have been better off to kill everyone all at once. In a way, I assume that the first plan was to wipe the physical location of Conria off the map. That place would have been too corrupted with the fact that a shadowy army had overtaken it. But perhaps at some point, the gods were conflicted. 
Perhaps they wished for Conry to exist, but not in the way that it used to be, to remind the citizens that they were powerless in the face of divinity. So they cursed them to live forever in wallowing pain. Which is why I believe that Celestia should have just killed the Conryans. The corruption would have ended instead of being suspended, and the Conryans could finally rest. The gods wanted to stop the corruption by manipulating human lifespan. They tried to apply the same logic of the gods to humanity. Which is unfair. Maybe death was too easy of a punishment for the foolish sages that delved into power, or too cruel for the civilians that had nothing to do with it. Conrea's paradoxical nature is fascinating to me. On one hand, the Conrians are undergoing immense pain every day because of both abyssal corruption and immortality. But on the other hand, cleansing either of these two could spell imminent death for the people. But that's it for me today. My name is Aster and thank you for chilling with me.